This is part one of a two-part tutorial on the features and controls found within the instrument dashboard. Part one will take you through the general settings, communications, alarms, and sampler tabs. Part two will take you through the sensor tab and will be specific to the sensor type you are using. So let's get started. If you are not already connected to the logger, connect to it now. The instrument dashboard will open automatically as soon as you connect. If you see this message, it means that sensors detected by the logger do not match the program that is in the logger. This most commonly occurs when sensors are disconnected or switched to different ports. If you are setting up an instrument for the first time, it is usually wise to create a new program. We'll cover each tab, button, and control in more detail. But first, let's take a quick look around. At the upper left, you see five tabs that each represent a different area of the programming workflow. On the right, we find the current status and diagnostic panel. There are also five buttons along the bottom. From left to right, Read from Logger will read the current program template and sensor port assignments from the instrument and populate the values that are found into the FS data template you are currently viewing. Any changes you have made to the template without saving will be lost. Load from File will bring you to the Windows Open File or Folder Browser. You can locate previously saved program templates and load them into the instrument dashboard where you can edit them and upload them to your logger. Restore Logger will clear all input fields and return all logger settings to a fresh state. Use this feature only if you want to completely start from scratch. If you click this button accidentally, you will be given plenty of warning and unless you have written the changes to the logger you can always go back to the previous template state by selecting read from logger. Restore logger only affects the logger and sensor program settings. It does not clear all data logs. To clear all data logs go to instrument tools under main menu utilities and select restore and or clear. Save to file will save the current template and settings to a file on your computer. Note, it does not save the template to your logger. You must use write to logger to save the program template to the logger. Save to file is particularly helpful if you want to use the template again in the future or want to duplicate the template on multiple loggers. Write to Logger uploads the currently open program template to your logger. While not necessary, it is common practice for folks to write to logger frequently. All changes made in Instrument Dashboard are persisted between tabs, meaning changes aren't lost when you flip from tab to tab. Anytime a change is made to the template, the message you see here is your indication that changes have been made and before you disconnect from the logger or leave the instrument dashboard, you will need to write to the logger. If you forget and try to navigate away from the instrument dashboard, a warning message will alert you. Now let's go back to the five tabs. FS Data is all about streamlining your workflow to save you time and reduce mistakes. We have arranged the tabs and their contents in such an order that follows the typical steps someone would follow when setting up an instrument. The first tab is General Settings. You will need to create a unique site ID for this installation. The site ID and the instrument serial number are used by the software to organize and identify your instruments. The location field is optional but it too can be used to help keep your instruments organized. Next, under the General Settings tab is the Port Assignments. If the sensors were connected to your logger when you connected to it with the software, 
then the port assignments will have been automatically configured for your sensors. If you did not or do not have the sensors connected but wish to program the logger, you can manually assign the ports. Manually configuring ports without the sensor attached will allow you to do everything but calibrate the sensors. Beneath the port assignments, you select the channels to data log and the data logging interval. Expand the list by selecting the triangle on the left of the label and then selecting the channels by clicking the boxes. You can data log up to 16 channels and there is a channel counter on the right. The instrument power supply voltage, rain, and sensor logging interval can be set independently. The secondary logging interval need only be set if you want to use the dynamic data logging capability of the instrument. This feature can change the data logging interval triggered by an alarm condition. For example, if you want to collect data more frequently during a rain event, you can set a trigger to use a shorter logging interval when a rain alarm is activated. We will discuss setting these triggers when we talk about the alarms tab. The Communications tab is next. More and more of our customers are experiencing the benefits of wireless connectivity. If you have a wireless logger, you will set your server verification code and primary call interval here. You can test your wireless connection by selecting the Modem Diagnostics button. Modem Diagnostics will display the signal strength as well as create a log that can be helpful for technical support personnel in the rare event that troubleshooting is required. Additional features on this tab include the ability to set your GPS coordinates for the instrument's location and access the Modbus map. The next tab is the Sensors tab and here is where you will make all of the program settings specific to your connected sensors. We will cover this tab in part two identified by specific sensor type. For example, FLODAR, TOTE 3, and AV9000. The Alarms tab is used to set alarms for triggering an attached sampler, changing to the secondary logging interval, or initiating a text or email alarm message. SMS or email alarming requires the optional wireless feature and an active wireless account. Channel alarms refers to logged channels within your logger. Only logged channels can have alarms assigned to them. Click Add and then select the channel and the alarm type. Now select the alarm trigger, dead band, and alarm output. Up to 16 alarms can be set. System alarms can be set on the next tab, and the email or SMS recipient list is on the last tab. The last tab is the sampler tab that is used when you want to flow pace an attached auto sampler. Select the port with the flow measurement you want to paste the sampler on, and then the pacing interval. Away from the tabs, on the right, the panel containing current status and diagnostics is visible. Current status displays the last values that were recorded in the data log. If you are logging a parameter at five minute interval, the current status of that parameter will update once every five minutes. Diagnostics will be covered in the individual videos for each specific sensor. Be sure to watch part two of this video specific to your sensor type. For more detailed information on any of the features mentioned in this video, check for specific individual videos in the list on the webpage.